Welcome to ZanKhan.org, this is Zan Khan. This show is based upon the recent article on Science Daily. As you can see on your screens right now, the title of this article is Observable Universe Contains 2 Trillion Galaxies, 10 Times More Than Previously Thought. Uh, to discuss this topic, we have with us today a prominent American astrophysicist and author, Yu Ross, who is also the founder of Reasons to Believe. Welcome to our show, Dr. Yu Ross. This is Zan Khan. It's a pleasure to have you on our show. Well, thank you. Dr. Ross, with the discovery that we may have up to 2 trillion galaxies in our universe, it looks like our planet just went from improbable to nearly impossible. Aside from that, our universe is simply awesome. What do you find exciting about this discovery? Well, I have the paper right here. I got published in the Astrophysical Journal just a few days ago. And to me, what's most exciting is that they were able to determine the population of galaxies in the universe at different distances away from Earth, which means different look-back times. So we're actually able to see how the population of galaxies changes from the beginning of the universe right up to the present. Uh, because the uh, models, the, the most successful uh, creation models for the universe predict that the number of galaxies will decrease with respect to time and at a particular rate. And this uh, study actually verifies that indeed is the case. So this stands as a powerful confirmation of cosmic creation models. And of course, it readjusts the number of galaxies that we thought in the universe. I mean, the Hubble Ultra Deep Field uh, told us that there was between 100 and 200 billion galaxies in the observable universe. However, they were only able to see the medium size, the large, and the giant galaxies. They weren't able to see the dwarf galaxies. And what this study tells us is that the number of dwarf galaxies is about 10 to 20 times greater than the total number of medium, large, and giant sized galaxies, which adds up to about 2 trillion galaxies total. Now, keep in mind these dwarf galaxies that they've added to the list uh, don't significantly change the total mass of the universe because these dwarf galaxies don't contain that many stars. Dr. Ross, a share about the story Starlight tells us. Well, what's interesting about astronomy is that we have no access to the present. We have direct access to the past. And it's because of the finite velocity of light. So the farther away we look in space, the farther back in time we see particular study was able to take us as far back in time as about 400 million years after the cosmic creation event. So we're getting within just a few percent of the uh, you know, current age of the universe. And we're actually able to see how the universe changes with respect to time. And this is how we're able to test different models of the history and the origin of the universe. And, how, and the reason why we see the number density of galaxies decreasing as we get closer and closer to us, or closer and closer to the present, is that galaxies merge and tiny galaxies get dispersed. And uh, what's called the Lambda Cold Dark Matter Big Bang Creation Model uh, predicts that there will be a certain fall of the number of densities of galaxies, and these observations actually show that that model is correct in its predictions. So that's what's most exciting about this. Uh, Dr. Ross, tell us about how the universe's behavior is so constant that scientists are able to create these mathematical models. Well, it's something we astronomers are able to directly measure. Uh, we can look at different look-back times and measure the constants of physics, and we've been able to do that to very high precision. So for, certain, for example, certain constants of physics, we can verify that they've not changed 
by more than one part uh, in 100 quadrillion uh, per year over the past 11 billion years. So yeah, the laws that govern the heavens and the earth are really constant, as the Bible declared uh, thousands of years ago. And actually, we know they must be constant because that's a requirement for advanced life to exist at this point in cosmic history. Change the laws of physics ever so slightly at any time in cosmic history, it destroys the possibility of the universe being able to sustain life. And because the universe, the laws of physics that govern the universe are you know, very uh, constant over the entire history and extent of the universe, that means that science is a trustworthy tool. We can count on the fact that the physics we see anywhere in the universe is going to be the same, which enables us to explore with great detail uh, the origin and history of the universe. Last question, Dr. Ross. Share with us the evidence of the fascinating beginning to our universe, uh, its implications, and how scientists are trying to work around the implications. Well, since 1970, my peers in physics and astronomy have de been developing what are called the space-time theorems. Today we have about 30 of these theorems. And these theorems are very powerful in that they're based on only two uh, fundamental assumptions. One is uh, the universe contains mass. Well, you and I are living proof that the universe contains mass. No one doubts that. Uh, the second important uh, presupposition is that the equations of general relativity reliably describe the movements of bodies in the universe. And today, the theory of general relativity ranks as the most exhaustively tested and best proven principle in all of physics. So, for example, we can verify that general relativity reliably predicts the movements of, say, uh, neutron stars that orbit one another to 15 places of the decimal. Now, the conclusion of the theorem is that the universe has a beginning and that the beginning includes the beginning of space and time itself, which implies there must be a causal agent beyond space and time that created our universe of matter, energy, space, and time. And the latest of those theorems was published in 2004, and one of the authors of that uh, theorem, Alexander Vilenkin, wrote a book a year later in which he stated, there is no escape. Cosmologists now must face up to the problem of a cosmic beginning. And of course, that problem is theological. Namely, there must be this being beyond space and time that created everything. And as a number of books written by atheist astronomers and physicists admit, deism cannot be taken off the table. The evidence is now so powerful and must recognize at the minimum there's a God beyond space and time that created everything. Now the question is, to what degree has that uh, uh, being beyond space and time engaged or interacted uh, with the universe since the cosmic creation event, and to what degree is he engaged uh, with the creatures that we see on the face of the Earth? Thank you so much, Dr. Ross, for being in our show. It was a pleasure having you. Well, thank you. This was Dr. Ross discussing the article on Science Daily, which uh, uh, is about the discovery of two trillion galaxies in the universe. Until the next episode, this is Ayn Khan. Take care and goodbye.